In the year 2012, there were roughly 678,810 children ranging from infants to 18 years old that were confirmed victims of abuse and neglect. 78.3% were neglected, 18.3% were physically abused, 9.3% were sexually abused, and 8.5% were psychologically maltreated. Children's Bureau of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, 2013. Can you believe that this happens to hundreds of thousands of children every year due to the fault of their guardians? For someone who has ever worked with children, who has ever had children, or anyone who cares about children in general, this is truly a devastating fact. I have worked in the same daycare for the past five years now, and I have seen such a large number of children as well as parents go through the center. Young children, such as the two-year-olds I currently watch, are extremely impressionable and innocent. They do not yet have the tools or the voice to express their problems. In this speech, I will inform you about the definition of abuse and neglect, as well as the different types and the signs and symptoms. Let's first start with understanding abuse. The Department of Children and Families defines abuse as a non-accidental injury to a child, which, regardless of motive, is inflicted or allowed to be inflicted by the person responsible for the child's care, DCF 2012. This abuse can be either physical, sexual, or emotional. Physical abuse would leave an observable external or internal injury on the child. Some signs of physical abuse would include unexplained injuries, like in the chart, fading bruises or marks after an absence, a child who appears to be afraid of their parent or guardian, or a child who cries when it is time to go home, a child who appears to be afraid when adults approach them, or a child who abuses animals. Children's Bureau, 2013. Please keep in mind that physical discipline is not a form of abuse. Abuse is often uncalled for, extreme, and unexpected, leaving the child in constant fear. A mother who comes home from a long day of work and hits their child simply because they asked what was for dinner is an example of abuse because there was no real reason for why the child was hurt. Now that we know what physical abuse is, let's learn about sexual abuse. Sexual abuse is any incident of sexual contact involving a child that is inflicted or allowed to be inflicted by the person responsible for the child's care, DCF 2012. This would include rape, intercourse, fondling, oral sex, sexual penetration, or participation in pornography, DCF 2012. Sexual abuse doesn't always involve touching. It could also result from exposure to sexual situations. Unfortunately, children are often unaware that sexual experiences are not normal for their age. The adult often takes a child's trust for granted, making them believe that this is how to show love towards your guardians. Children who are aware of what is going on will sometimes report their sexual encounters or even voice their knowledge of sexual information. But for the children who cannot speak for themselves, there are some telltale signs of sexual abuse to look out for. These signs include a child who has difficulty walking or sitting, a child who refuses to change in front of others, a child who tries to avoid a specific person, a child under the age of 14 who contracts an STD or becomes pregnant, or a child who displays the act of seduction, Smith and Seagal, 2014. Sexual abuse can occur in both boys and girls, so any of these signs should raise a red flag to an outside observer. Now let's move on to our last form of abuse, emotional abuse. Emotional abuse is the result of cruel or unacceptable acts and or statements made, threatened to be made, or allowed to be made by the person responsible for the child's care that have a direct effect on the child, DCF 2012. This type of abuse deals more with the psychological aspect of children and is more behavioral based. A few of the signs for emotional abuse include extreme behavior such as passive or aggressive behavior, a child who appears to be parenting another child, a child who has delayed physical or emotional development, a child who seems unattached to their parent or guardian, a child who has attempted suicide, or a child who shows infant-like behaviors such as rocking back and forth or headbanging for attention, Children's Bureau 2013. For example, a child who is often told that they are useless or unwanted will most likely exhibit a lack of confidence and a lack of interest. Now in some circumstances, emotional abuse might be confused with neglect, or it might even cross over to be considered neglect as well. So let's learn about neglect next. 
Neglect can be physical, medical, educational, or emotional. It is defined as the failure, whether intentional or not, of the person responsible for the child's care to provide and maintain adequate food, clothing, medical care, supervision, and or education, DCF 2012. Most of the neglect seems to be happening at home when the child is with their guardian. However, if a child shows up to school wearing clothing that is too small, clothing that is inappropriate for the weather, or appears to be dirty, don't you think that this would stand out from the ordinary? Some other warning signs of neglect to look out for include a child who is frequently absent from school, a child who steals or begs for food or money, a child who needs medical, dental, or eye care but does not receive it, or a child who abuses alcohol or drugs, Children's Bureau 2013. A parent going through depression or an addiction can result in the possibility of neglect. If the parent is not in a healthy state of mind, they could have the potential to put their children's well-being in the background. So make sure that you are paying attention to the parent's behaviors as well as the child's. Let's recap everything we've learned so far. As you can see, there are many ways in which a child can be abused or neglected due to the fault of their guardians. All of these instances can result in negative long-term physical, psychological, behavioral, and social consequences. Now that you have an understanding of what abuse and neglect is, as well as the different types and signs and symptoms, I hope you can see what an important issue that it is. Please keep in mind the next time you see or hear something out of the ordinary that gives you a terrible gut feeling. There are approximately over 3 million referrals of abuse and neglect each year, but only one third of them are usually confirmed. So if you ever have a suspicion, don't jump to conclusions. Remember these signs and symptoms, as well as the severity of the situation before reporting it to authorities. You can contact the local Department of Children and Families if you feel the need to report any case. These children are our future. Please look after them, for someday they will be looking after us.